I need to search you. What's going on? Orders of his lordship. Oh, come on then. Hmm. All right. You can go. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords. Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Our grave Jobs was just about to you. tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How they changed, Your Grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed, but to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. 
Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas' journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst, Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. People like him, though. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergov, Heinrich von Rosenberg. The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Bergov is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary, <laughs> partly due to my efforts, and now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgov would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. 
I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I pack my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft a letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Hmm. Oh, what isn't really the issue. The question is how. We need to learn where they stand on liberating the king and ousting Sigismund. If they'll make trouble or join our side. So, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes. I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be travelling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Bergov tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Yes, sir. Very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? A few moments later. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burgoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed.
So, can we set off now, Henry? Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse. The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly. I'm getting used to it. What about Rodzik? Has he accounted for not owning up to you the whole time? He explained it. All will be well, I think. Glad to yeah. hear it. It's far more acceptable for a nobleman to befriend a noble bastard than a blacksmith's son. Mind you, don't come to blows with a blacksmith, my young lord. What do you think about Sir Yobbs and his plan? Well... I admit all the scheming has me a little lost. I thought Sigismund was the devil, Wenceslas a martyr, those on his side the heroes, and those against him the villains. I believed we'd rescue the king and all would be well again. But now yeah. it looks a lot more complicated. <laughs> exactly. I didn't expect the noble lords to be as noble as the angels, but I hadn't expected such a sewer. They behave like children. I can't fathom how after all this backstabbing they're somehow still on speaking terms. I don't know either. It beggars belief. Did you know that King Wenceslas is such a... such a... Feckless drunkard? Not really. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. I slept better, believing my fate was watched over by a wise and powerful monarch. So did I. What a dismal world when you can't keep trust in your own king. On the other hand, times were better with him here than with him gone. Isn't that the truth? What do you think of Sigismund? If I were him, I'd have had enough of my brother even sooner. But he's a monster. Look at what those hordes of his are getting up to here. What he did in Scalitz. True enough. On the other hand, if Wenceslas and Prokop hadn't double-crossed him, none of this would have happened. No one forced him to burn Scalitz. That's a fact. But he couldn't let them shit all over him either. Not that I'm defending him. Though. He's a weasel. No doubt about that. Do you know anything about Prokop? Ha! <laughs> Sir Hanish could tell you a thing or two about him. Why? Last winter, a certain Sir Jan Sokol of Lamberg, a well-known knight, or robber baron to some, tried to occupy the city of Igla, which was on the orders of none other than Prokop. And what has that got to do with Hanish? Well, he was there with him. Of course that's not something to brag about in front of Jobs. And what was it all about? They wanted to occupy a city that was on the side of the League of Lords, but despite there being several hundred strong, they didn't take it. For one thing, they couldn't get past the Eglau women, with their pitchforks and cauldrons of hot water. <laughs> I would never have thought of Sahanish as such a rebel. And have you heard anything about Rupert of the Palatinate? A little. He can't manage even to wrest power from a king who doesn't much care for ruling and isn't fighting back. That doesn't seem like a man who has what it takes to rule. And that's all I need to know. And that Burgoff we're going to see, do you know anything about him? I haven't heard much good about him, but I have a feeling that some other nobles are quite in awe of him. And his castle is apparently quite impressive. I'll be interested to see for myself. what about the League of Lords? Wealthy, pompous. The king doesn't seem to like them much. He's chosen to let the lesser ranks of the nobility into his circle. Men like your father. I admit I don't blame him one bit. But the lords weren't happy about their lost influence, so they put their foot down. 
If I were Wenceslas, I'd have let them hang after they abducted me the first time. But he gave them seats at the provincial council? Little wonder they're back at their old tricks. 